Okay, we are good to go. Good morning, everyone. It is 10.30, and I am calling this meeting of the Zoning Administrator to order. Approval of minutes. We are not making any changes to the minutes from March 21st and approving them. And here on item three, we are now taking public comments on item three, non-agenda matters. This is the time when any person may address matters not listed on this agenda, but which are within the subject matter jurisdiction of this committee. If you're attending in person and you would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand. We have no public comments. Thank you. It closed. And we can close the public comments. And we are moving to next item, statement of purpose. I'm going to read this paragraph. The zoning administrator is appointed by the planning and economic development director and has the responsibility and authority to conduct public meetings and hearings and to act on applications for minor or reduced review authority projects or entitlement such as land use permits. A determination or decision by the zoning administrator may be appealed to the design review board, cultural heritage board, planning commission or city council as applicable to the decision. All actions taken by the zoning administrator may be appealed within 10 calendar days. If the final day of the appeal period falls on a non-business day, the appeal period will be extended to the next business day. And item five, we have no consent items. And now we will move to schedule items. Item 6.1 is a public meeting, conditional use permit, personal service restricted for I don't know how to spell this one. G Zcan. Zcan Studio at 100 Bear Street, suite number K. File number is CUP 23-018 and the project planner, Jan and Briscoe is going to present it. The CUP 23-080. Correct. Thank you, Ms. Thank Chicago. You. So I'm just trying to get into the presentation mode. That's at the top. Oh, wait. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm John Briscoe, and I'm here to present to you um, Zakan Studio. The applicant is proposing a tattoo shop located at 100 Bird Street, Sweet K, and it's a minor condition use permit for personal services restricted. And the file number is CUP 223-080. As I said previously, the applicant is proposing a tattoo shop that will be open from noon to six and will sell clothing with the store's logo. And here's the general plan land use designation, which is retail and business services. And the zoning land use designation is general commercial. So both the general plan and zoning are compatible. And here's the neighborhood context. And the site is about a mile away from the Costco shop, if you Costco store, if you're familiar, familiar with that. And here's the floor plan of the tattoo shop. And there will be about three chairs, a coffee table, you know, typical tattoo shop area, a waiting, waiting area, and a clothing rack for the um for the apparel that they're selling. And there were six required findings, and I was able to make each of them. And the project has been found in compliance with the California Environmental Equality Act, pursuant to CEQA guidelines, Section 15301. The project is categorically exempt from CEQA because the project consists of only minor interior alterations to an existing, to an existing structure will not involve an expansion of the existing or former use. At this time, there are no resolved issues as a result of staff review. Thus, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic 
Development Department, the zoning administrator approved a minor use permit to allow a, tat a tattoo shop at 100 Bird Street, Sweet K. And here's my information if you have any questions. Thank you. And then, did we have any public? Did you receive any calls or emails? Did you have any comments? Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> okay, thank you. And um, I do not have any questions, so let's open it for the public comments. All right, if you're attending in person and you'd like to make a comment on this item, please raise your hand. Learning Administrator, we have no public comments. Okay. And I don't have any questions. Is it straightforward? Mm -hmm. yes. And I will close the public comments period also. Thank you, Secretary, for reminding me. And yeah, it's a straightforward. It's existing suite. They are using it as a tattoo shop, which is allowed by a minor use permit. I will approve this resolution. Parking is available there in this area that has similar uses. And I will move to the next item. Oh, and by the way, the appeal period is 10 calendar day from today, which is going to be April 15. If you want to appeal this decision, it will be on April 15. And we will move to the next item, which is item 6.2. It is conditional use permit and design review for exterior work and site improvements for ARCO located at 2500 Guerneville Road, file number PRJ24-004. And again, Jandon Briscoe is a planner who's going to present. Thank you for the introduction, Mr. Shaka Mrs. Shakali, and I'm here to present to you Arco Exterior Site Improvements, and this is a gas station, so that's why a minor use permit is required for this, and it's a minor design review. But the project is located at 2500 Guerneville Road. An applicant proposes to replace fill canopies, remove the exterior decorative tile, and patch with stucco. Move a dome with rosettes and install new exterior lights and new paint on an existing building. And here, this is what it looks like now. And that's what it will look like when after this is done. And here, you, one can see the, the canopy. And on the left side, that's, that's the existing site. But on the right side, it's more like your, your typical gas station. You, you will see from your typical gas station, a canopy. And yeah, they're just removing the brick, the brick roofing off the existing canopy and making it like a regular gas station. And as I said before, gas stations and related fossil fuel infrastructure should not be enlarged, extended, reconstructed, or moved to a different portion of the lot or parcel of land. Fossil, fossil fuel infrastructure is subject to this provision, but includes, but is not limited to structures, features, facilities, related to the cell, storage, conveyance, and dispensing of gasoline and any other fossil fuel. A modern use permit shall be required for any modifications to an existing gas station and fossil fuel infrastructure. And this was, this, this law was instituted after our gas station ban, or as a result of our gas station ban, I should say. And a general plan land use designation is retail and business services, and a zoning land use designation is neighborhood commercial. So, yeah, consistent. Yeah, so they're consistent. Thank you. Here's the neighborhood context of the of the project location. So along a busy road. And here's the site plan. And on and here's the the environmental review, and the city council approved the resolution adopting a mitigated negative declaration for the alcohol services gas station. And the scope of the project remains 
unchanged and is consistent with the analysis of the environmental document. And there would be, and there are no new circumstances or no information that would require for the environmental review under CEQA, section 15162. Additionally, pursuant to, one, pursuant to CEQA guidelines 15301, the project is categorically exempt from CEQA because the project only includes exterior changes. At this point, there are no resolved issues as a result of staff review. Thus, it is recommended by PED or Planning and Economic Development that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor use permit in minor design review to allow exterior improvements at 2500 Garyville. And there's my contact information if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you, Chandan. Uh, is the applicant available? Do they have any? Oh, good morning. Uh, I'm Ahmad Gadiri with ANS Engineering. I'm just here to answer any questions. Thanks for the great job of presenting the project. And again, it's just mostly just uh, cosmetic changes for the canopy. The use of stays the same. We're not expanding the building or expanding the fueling. It's just more to upgrade the facility. Are you making any changes to the gas dispensers or are they going to remain as they are? Well, the number of dispensers stay the same, but the pumps are being upgraded, you know, replaced basically because of maintenance. Okay. Uh, but the number of the fuel positions are not changed. And I, just a general question sure. why you are removing those tiles on the, not the canopy, but the building itself? Uh, you know, to bring it up to more of a contemporary style that we're adopting on all our sites. It's a little bit older building and we just want to, you know, revamp the building, make it look much, let's say, uh, up to the standards that we are, input, uh, you know, applying to all our projects. Okay, so, yeah. thank you. And now we will open it for the public comments. Secretary. If you're attending in person, would like to make a comment on this item, please raise your hand. We have no public comments. Then I will close the public comment period. And same as the previous item, I have no questions or comments. It's straightforward, improving the site, and I will approve the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. And if you want, want the signed resolution, please reach out to the planner. Okay. It will email you the signed resolution. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you. The appeal period. I closed it. The appeal period. Oh, the appeal period also ends on the 15th, <laughs> if anyone wants to appeal this decision. And we will move to the next item. This is also a minor conditional use permit for mobile food vending located at 1165 Montgomery Drive. File number is CUP 23-023. Yeah. And our okay. planner yeah. is La Sarchno. Yes. Can you please stay up, sir? Thank you. Thank you, Zoning Administrator Shikali. Um, my name is Suchnor Bisla, and the application before you is for the Compass USA food truck located at 1165 Montgomery Drive. The applicant is proposing a mobile, mobile food facility serving the Providence Santa Rosa Memorial Hospital campus and it will operate as an extension of the existing main kitchen on site. Um, it will be open seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and there will be three full-time employees and they will be making use of the existing patio tables and seating and the hospital restrooms. Here is a zoomed out view of the location. And here's a closer aerial view um, where that star is, is about where the truck will be located. Um, there is a back patio back here um, and the existing cafeteria kitchen is um, within this building here. The general plan land use designation for the site is public institutional and it is part of a plan development district. Here is a site plan, um, just zoomed in on where the food truck will be located. Uh, so it'll be on the patio in the back, 
Um, the food truck will be closer to the, the fence and the property line. There uh, are these existing uh, tables and seating um, where the squares are located. And I believe the circles um, are where uh, the trash receptacles are. And then uh, down in the corner uh, where the cafe is, uh, that the food truck is an extension of, there's uh, restrooms located within 200 feet of the food truck. The project is categorically exempt from CEQA pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15. 15304 as it's a minor temporary use of land and it will have no permanent effects on the environment. Um, the project has been, the staff is able to make all the required findings for a minor conditional use permit as the project has been appropriately conditioned to prevent any hazardous impacts to the adjacent Santa Rosa Creek. There are no unresolved issues as a result of staff review. Um, I did receive a comment yesterday that I will read for the record uh, from a neighbor. I live almost next door to Memorial Hospital, now called Providence Hospital. The proposed food truck would be a welcome addition to this neighborhood and should be approved without delay. To avoid a climate catastrophe, city governments need to allow residents to live carless and car light lifestyles. A walkable place to get affordable food is a step in the right direction. It is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor conditional use permit to allow mobile food vending at 1165 Montgomery Drive. And for any comments or questions, there is my contact information. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sachnor. Do we have the applicant available? Do they have any presentation or I, do you wanna to add to your presentation? I believe the applicant is available to answer questions. Hello, my name is Wendy. I'm with um, Morrison Healthcare Compass Group. Um, it, we submitted the applications. I'm available for any questions that you may have. I've also invited my colleagues here. I, I cannot see who's in attendance, but I've invited them to this meeting virtually as well. So if they'd like to speak up, they may be available also. Okay, thank you, I appreciate it. I just have one question. Is the area where the tr food truck for mobile truck going to be parked any parking space or it won't be taking over any parking space? It won't be taking up any parking space. Okay, thank you. And I will open it for the public comments now. Uh, and we also have Alex Khan um, who has raised his hand as an attendee. It sounds like he's uh, responding yeah, to. Yeah, yeah I, I just, thanks. I just wanted to add, um, I'm here with, at the, the hospital. Uh, I'm the regional director of operations for, for Providence, Northern California, uh, helping spearhead the project. So I just wanted to chime in and say I'm in attendance as well. If there's any questions I can assist with. Thank you, I appreciate it. So now I will open it for the public comments. If there's anybody attending in person would like to make a comment. All right, I see some shaking heads. Sounds like we do not have any public comment. Then I will close the public comments. And similar to other projects, I do not have any comments. The mobile food truck will be next to the cafe, will provide additional help for the hospital. It's not taking over any parking spaces for the hospital. It won't have any conflict with the patients leaving and coming to the hospitals. And I will approve it as well. And Wendy and Alex, if you need the signed resolution, please reach out to Planner such Noor, she will provide you the signed resolution. And Thank with that, much. I'm approving this one. The appeal period is April 15. Anyone who wants to appeal the decision. And we will move to the last item on the list. This is also another public meeting. A minor conditional use permit for a warehouse use at 240 Barham Avenue, file number CUP 23-069. And planner such Noor is presenting the project. Thank you again, Zoning Administrator Shikali. 
Um, the project before you is the Gotland Warehouse. It is a request for a minor conditional use permit at 240 Barham Avenue. The proposed use is warehouse wholesaling and distribution. The property will be used as a private storage for personal and business items. There will be no regular hours or employees and the site will not be accessed frequently. Here is a neighborhood context map to show where um, the project is located. And here is a closer aerial view of the site. The zoning for this site is, um, it's a part of a planned development district and the general plan land use designation is medium density residential. Um, the implementing zoning district for medium density residential, uh, for the medium density residential general plan land use designation is uh, R3, which is also medium density residential. And the proposed use is not permitted in the implementing zoning district. However, the previous use was manufacturing and processing light food and beverage product manufacturing, which was a legal non-conforming use at the site. And the zoning code allows for a non-conforming use with a, to be replaced with a similar non-conforming use as long as the use does not increase the intensity or uh, non-conformity. Uh, the previous use consisted of a business with employees, um, and the current use is private storage, uh, a private warehouse. So there will be a decrease in intensity. Um, the site is surrounded by residential uses and uh, the impacts on those residences will be decreased as well. Here is a rough site plan. Um, there's plenty of paved space for parking all uh, along the Barham Avenue side of the site. The project is categorically exempt from CEQA uh, pursuant to guideline section 15301 as it is the use of an existing structure with no expansion involved. There are no unresolved issues as a result of staff review and no public comment has been received for this project. Therefore, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor conditional use permit to allow the operation of a warehouse wholesaling and distribution use at 240 Barham Avenue. And for any questions or comments, there is my contact information. Thank you. Thank you. Mother Sochnur, is the applicant available? I do believe he, he called in. Uh, Eric Gotland is yes. he raised his hand. Go ahead, you're able to unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. We can. Hello? Hello? Okay, good. Yes, I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you, Eric. Do you have anything else to add to Planner Such Norse presentation? Um, not really. It was a building that had actually had um, a number of drug issues in the neighborhood and uh, it was cleaned up and the neighbors are very happy with the change. Thank you. I have some questions. Maybe you or the planner can ask answer them. I was there yesterday and I noticed a fence around the building. Lots of, not lots, but trash. Some are an RV park there. So can you explain what is happening with those with the fence and the RV, and I noticed already some work happening inside of the building. Yes, I have uh, a tenant who is a carpenter, mm -hmm. and he is storing his, uh, he builds chicken coops and does union carpentry work. So that's his, he uses it to uh, keep his things, have them come and go. And he has a trailer there currently that's leaving. He parked it there temporarily, um, but he's on notice to get that out of there. Um, the, the fencing is temporary job fencing. It's not connected to anything. It's on the property line, and it's uh, it's there in order to abate a parking problem we've had. The um, As I said, the building was derelict for a number of years 
with somebody uh, actually living in there who was renting it by the night to drug addicts. When it was cleaned up, it had hundreds and hundreds of needles all over the 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 site inside and outside of the the warehouse and um all of that's gone but the neighbors took this as a sign to just use it to park all sorts of things there um there were trailers that people were living in on the parking side that you see on barham avenue uh there were people parking overnight um there was there were the police were called for various things so we've put this temporary fencing up in order to keep people out and send a signal to the to the neighbors and the other people who are just utilizing the property that it's now occupied and they can't come and do that any longer. Um, and I'm working with NOR to uh, get that uh, a temporary use job fencing approval so that we can um, keep it there and make sure that nobody parks. Do you know for how long do you want to keep the fence there? Um, the Well, the project has been conditioned uh, that a temporary use permit must be applied for uh, to legalize the temporary fencing. Um, when that permit comes in, it will be up to a maximum of 12 months for the temporary fencing. Um, th that is the maximum. And then uh, it... It and I don't be. think I, do, I don't think it will take that long. I just I've been going around and meeting all of the neighbors who are happy with this and understanding that they can't park there any longer. I don't want to tow anyone. Um, so I'm trying to use this fence in, in place of actually causing any issues with people who have been parking there regularly um, and letting them understand that, you know, this isn't a place where anyone can just leave a car overnight. Okay. Another question I have, was there any permit obtained for the carpentry? Um, oh, there, it's, yeah. there is no carpentry. It, it, it's, it's a, uh, he just stores his items there. It's purely storage. So the storage is for Eric um, and personal items of his, and then also a carpenter stores some of his business items. So um, it will be mainly used for storage. There's not going to be any construction work happening there. No. Yeah. Okay. That's right. That's right. I may I may have some work done down the road, but I'll permit that at that time. Okay. So I will open it now for the public comments. If there's anybody attending in person who would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand. Uh, All right. So if you could go ahead and please... Uh, Excuse me. Uh, sorry, just a moment here. Um, if you could go ahead and please state your name for the record. Uh, Sherry Uber. Okay. And go ahead. Um, I would like to find out, is there anything happening to keep people from parking in front of the fence? Um, I'm... I know that that is not something that was the purpose was to keep people from parking, but um, as of even this morning, people park on the outside of the fence. And so it becomes a one lane road at that area. Um, and I am, we're really happy with the changes. I'm just trying to figure out if a plan has been made for people parking and obstructing the road. Um, thank you for that. I. I I'm not I'm not sure how to address that. And I've seen that happen as well. And it's actually caused me some issues because we have two warehouse doors and sometimes those cars have blocked those doors. So I, I I'd love to know a way to to do that, too. Right now, I'm just trying to stem the damage of people actually pulling onto the property and right. staying there, <clears throat> you know. I guess has been endemic for a number of years. I've the next door neighbors have had a lot of problems with that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I don't okay. know. I, I think it is legal to park on the outside of the fence. There is there, it doesn't look like there's any kind of no parking designation out there. Um, but I yeah, I don't know the I don't know how to how to well, deal with that. Exactly. 
With the fence where it is, it basically creates a situation if someone parks along the fence, it's like they're double parked. So um, I don't know that the fence needs to be moved. Um, I know that uh, the people who were working on doing stuff inside have um, sometimes pull a car in um, on the inside of the fence. Um, but I don't know if we can put tow notices just on that side or, um, we, or what? we've actually done, we've actually done that. Um, at first, before there was a fence, we put mm -hmm. no parking tow signs all along the side of the building. Yeah, I saw that. Which weren't, which weren't very effective. Yeah, um, so then I saw that. We, <laughs> we put up the, the, the job point. fencing. Yeah. And the job fencing is on the property line. Mm -hmm. um, I could, uh, we, we could move it in a bit more, um, but then people would be parking on the edge of the property line or on the property itself. Um, but I understand your concern for sure. It's, um, it's, you know, it's one of those areas where it does narrow down as it approaches the corner. There's also another dangerous situation this is abating. We have people driving right up through the property not stopping at all at the stop sign and driving over the corner of my property as if it's a turn lane. Uh -huh. So the fence prevents that from happening as well. I don't know if you've ever seen that happen. I'm afraid I have. Let's, oh, sorry. Yeah. I can't forth. No, you get your like, a public comments period and then okay. I move on. Um, I can also speak to that. So when the uh, temporary fence, when the permit comes in for the temporary use permit for the fence, uh, we will be checking to make sure that the fence is located on his property and not in the public right of way. Mm -hmm. um, and then any cars that are parked outside of that outside of his property, um, that is not really a him issue because it's right. in the public right of way. Um, so if there is an issue with the parking there, uh, you might want to work with the city uh, with your concerns. Okay. So there's yeah, police, I, traffic, police traffic enforcement would be the ones to handle that. Okay. I, I have spoken to them. Um, okay. okay. Yeah. One, one more thing I'd like to say is uh, thank you for your comments, Sherry. And I'm I'm committed to doing everything I can to make the property safer and the neighbors happy, which is what I've been trying to do. Okay, thank you. Can let's can we close the public comment period if there are no other comments? There are no public comments. I will close the public comments. I appreciate the conversation, Ooh. providing your comments. I understand the issue with the parking there. Yesterday when I drive there, I noticed something also. This pro parcel property was vacant for a long time, I think. The issue was happening. Was this also a code enforcement or no? Um, there was a code enforcement for the RV and for the um, the use was had already commenced. Um, but I believe that Eric had worked that out with the code enforcement officer. Okay. So, yes, and, and there was a prior court in, court code enforcement prior to my ownership that was for the the drug people, and I think they were also growing marijuana illegally and all sorts of things, but that was before my time. Okay, thank you, Eric. Well, I'm one thing I'm supportive of it, like using this warehouse instead of leaving it vacant. Mm -hmm. It's better than be used and some, some, someone maintains it. I just would like to add the condition, Eric, just saying that no outdoor storage would be allowed on the site. So it needs to be cleaned. No storing of any kind of materials should be allowed. It's a narrow, like a, outside of it's pretty narrow and you need space for parking. It just needs to be maintained and work with planners such Noor for the fence, temporary use permit. Maybe, here is my recommendation. I don't know if it would work or no. Maybe some landscaping, some planter boxes, something would help preventing people from parking on that site. Maybe you can come up with the ideas, having some like a boxes there, planter boxes, to prevent from cars parking on your site. But it well, seems great. that there is a like driveway. That What's that? I like, that. I like the planter box idea, actually. That, it can help. Cool. Consider that. See how it will help. I have seen some places providing planter boxes 
it can also help with beautifying your property. But I have no other comments and issues. And the noise is just a regular comments. Maybe we can add the conditions saying compliance with the noise ordinance is required. So in case there is something happening there, make sure the doors are closed, any work happening inside of the building to not bother your neighbors with the noise. So I will add just two conditions. No outdoor storage is allowed. Maintain any outdoor activities like a storing of materials, prevent that and make sure to comply with the noise ordinance. And again, consider, it's not a recommendation, I'm not gonna add a condition, adding some landscaping planter boxes there to help with the parking issue. And I will approve this project also. I have no other comments. And appeal period is 10 calendars day if anyone wants to appeal this decision. And with that, we are closing this zoning administrator as of right now, the zoning administrator is adjourned. Thank you for everyone. Thank you for your patience.